Dudes, what's crack a lacking? So, today's episode, I'm going to get into two modifications for the foot switch for the PRS MT15. And the first one involves getting rid of this. This cable sucks. Let's get going. Okay, so now that I officially own Ta-da! Two PRS MT15 heads. Uh, this one has the 6L6. This has the 5881 tubes. Look for a future video comparing those two. But anyways, that's not what this one's about. This one's about these foot switches. So this one has the original wiring and this cable that's connected. This cable, um, let me take a step back. So I was playing live with this particular foot switch and this cable started to short out on me. And it was no good, yo, in a live setting. Fortunately, I was still able to kind of finagle the foot switch enough to work, but I could tell it wasn't gonna be long-term that this thing was gonna hold up. The fix is pretty simple, actually. What you'll do, you can see these lugs this is, if this thing will focus, right? This is a negative and a double throw positive. So here's your ground, here's your lead to the foot switch. It's just a sleeve and tip. You know what else is a sleeve and tip? Your guitar cables. So it's an easy swap, actually. So if you just go buy one of your, what, Switchcraft or whatever, use a high quality, input jack. Just go buy one of these. It fits right in this hole and you just pull out this little plastic rubber beady thing, whatever it is, and it pops right out and you just screw this jack right in like such. I used a fancy one that has a double connect, but you can just use the regular CTS, or I'm sorry, Switchcraft uh, input jack and it works. You wire it the same way. And ta-da, now you can use a high quality guitar cable for your foot switch. That's simple. So as, as long as you're decent with a soldering iron, you don't even have to be an expert or anything. And wire it exactly the same way. Um, so these are different. You can see that this one's connected to the left pole and this one's connected to the right one. It doesn't matter. They're both positives. So um, they're both gonna do the same thing when you click on the pedal, it, it'll, it'll trigger it the same way. So that's fix number one. Fix number two, I want an LED in this thing, um, but it's a little more challenging and not as straightforward as that. So let's get into that one. Okay, so this might be a bit confusing for the minute, but I'll explain it. So you can see we are on the blue channel and I have the foot switch of this orange, uh, my orange TH30 foot switch, which it operates the exact same way as the PRS MT15 foot switch. It's the exact same. The only difference is the first modification is already done, so a guitar cable can go in there and to operate the foot switch. Second thing I want to do is add this LED. Well, I'm trying to at least show you the problem here. So you can see the LEDs on, we're on the blue channel. When I turn it off, it turns into the red channel. And that's how it's gonna have to be with the LED, unfortunately, um, because the connection, when, when, the, when, the, when it actually closes down, it's the circuit's closed on the blue channel the circuit becomes open on the red channel. So you see the problem? So when this thing's getting voltage through the foot switch, it's actually on the blue channel. Well, to power the LED internally without a battery, you need the voltage. So the only way I'm gonna get this LED to light up is through the blue channel. So that's, you know, ideally I would rather it be 
lighting up the red channel, right? Have a red LED, light up the red channel. That's typical. That's how we typically see the, the channel switch work. Well, I, I at least want a LED in the foot switch. That way I don't have to turn around and look at the amp, see what, which, uh, which channel I'm on, you know, when I'm starting the next song. That's, that's no good. So we're going to check voltage across this. Again, it has to be on the blue channel. So negative, positive, 14.9 volts. So we'll say 15 volts into the pedal from the amplifier. So we'll, we'll use that to calculate uh, the LED and the uh, voltage from the pedal into the LED and the amount of resistance we need to not overheat the LED. So I got on Amazon and I purchased 150 pieces of these little LED emitting diodes, a bunch of different colors. But the key that we're trying to look at here is right here. So they're 20 milliamp based on the color you're using, they're either three volts, uh, the forward, I'm sorry, the forward voltage is either 2.2 to 2.2 volts for red, yellow, and green, or for blue and white, it's three to 3.2 volts. They're both 20 milliamps though. So that's the numbers we need to use to calculate the resistance uh, to make sure the LED is getting the right resistance. So from there, I, use this website, which is called ledcalculator.net, and I'll post this link in the description below on the video uh, description. Um, but so we calculated for, to the pedal 15 volts, right? Uh, the LED voltage drop, uh, we're gonna use a blue light, so let's use 3.2. The milliamp rating is 20. So, and if we design the circuit, 15 volts coming in through, through the LED to the resistor. This is the resistor. They're saying we need a 620 ohm resistor to ground. Well, since this is referencing the blue channel, I'm gonna use um, a blue LED. I want, obviously wanted it to be for the red channel, but how the pedal's wired, it has to be for the blue channel. So this is blue, so 3.2. So the maximum resistor we're gonna use is 620 ohms. Uh, you could diffuse the light a little bit more if you went to a higher resistance, which I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use a 100K ohm resistor, uh, which will diffuse the light and just make sure the LED doesn't burn out. It's gonna be super bright as it is. If you wanna keep diffusing the light more, use an even higher resistor, but that's kind of the maximum resistance to get the brightest light would be around 620 with that voltage. Okay, this looks a little complicated. It really isn't, it's very simple. So this is the lead, this is the positive. We're, and I'm just using these uh, alligator clips. So we're into the diode and let's see if I have one. I'll pull one out so you guys can see. I'll use the red one since that's what I wanted to uh, actually use in the first place. Oops. So you'll notice when you have it, one one is longer, one of the leads is longer than the other off the diode here of, of the uh, LED. The longer lead is the positive. So just a little FYI on that one. So we are going into the positive of the LED the negative of the LED is going out. Um, we are going into the resistor here. This is a 1K resistor. And then we are taking it back to ground, right? The center lug there. So <clears throat> I will show you. It is not on, which we've discussed. Not on, unfortunately, is the red channel. Ta-da! And then when I click blue channel, the LED is on. So blue channel is the indicator. I wish it could be red. So we thumbed through this real fast, but um, just wanted to show you this. So here's the five millimeter. These are five millimeter 
LED diode. So that's this packet right here, 150 of these things. That's this thing that I got in this little super cheap container. So I, I could put LEDs on things for, for days. And then I got a 10 piece of the little mounting things. They look like this. That's the upper thing in the screen. These cost me six bucks. They're actually $2.29, but it was more to ship them to me. Um, this was $5.91 with all these LEDs. And then 600 pieces of these resistors at various values cost me $8.30. So for, what is that, little, little around 20 bucks, and I got way more than I ever needed. Uh, I have all the parts to be able to install this LED. So I will, uh, Plan on drilling a hole in the top of this this pedal here, probably in the middle of the R, and uh, getting this pedal to to light up. So let me drill a hole, and we will mount this LED. Okay, got that all drilled out. I'm happy with how that turned out. Uh, you can see it's a little scuffed up on the edge here. I had to file it down to get the burrs out, the metal burrs, so that this thing would sit flush. Uh, so now we're to the LED. So these little mounting pieces come with this little plastic piece and you just slide it on over the LED like such. And then you slide this into the hole and it should push through and voila, there's your LED. Simple as that. So now we just need to solder her up. Get it straightened up here. Oh, uh, there we go. All right. There's the resistor. There's the LED. I just need some lead wire and we're good. So uh, after I got done explaining all that stuff about this thing and saying, hey, why don't you use 620 ohms? And here's what it calcs out as. Well, it's drawing too much voltage at 620. And even when I used the thousand, remember I said I was gonna use the thousand ohm resistor, it was still drawing too much voltage because it, th this thing wasn't meant to have an LED. So I needed it to pull a very minimum amount of the voltage so it would still switch the channels. A 4.7K resistor, ohm resistor. And that seems to be the magic sauce. So it's, it's quite a bit more resistance. So there's not as much current running through, or I, I'm sorry, as much voltage running through uh, the LED. So it's, it's, it's pushing some of the current back to actually do the channel switching on the amp. So when I had that 1K in here, it wouldn't switch channels. Now that it has this 4.7K, it switches channels and the LED comes on. And yes, it's a little less bright, but you guys saw it. it's like crazy bright still. So there's the mod. I'm gonna put it back together. I'm happy with how it turned out. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I mean, again, I wish it was the red channel, but that's not how the switch is wired. It's backwards. So I can only turn on the LED on the blue channel. I got it all soldered in. Not the prettiest job I've ever done. So lead tied to the other lead, goes through the LED, resistor on the other side to the ground. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Here's what it looks like on the other side. And when I click on blue, the blue clicks on. So just so you can see them side by side, blue, red, blue, red, right? All right, guys. Well, those are my foot switch changes, my mods. My little blue light change. My little cord change. I think they're both phenomenal and will be much uh, appreciated when I'm on stage. Now I'm going to turn around and look at the amp, see if I'm on red or blue channel. This will perfectly do that and the cable will make sure that uh, it doesn't short out when I'm trying to switch channels. So it's all about live performance for me with the, with the foot switch. So. But uh, yeah, guys, uh, I will be comparing the two amps in the future. Uh, look for that video. 
I gotta figure out exactly how I wanna shoot, uh, shoot that video. I decided to take off uh, some skin off my guitar ring finger. So uh, playing guitar this very minute feels pretty painful. So we'll just hold off on playing some guitar for a little bit. Not real happy about that, but such is life, you know? Let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments in the uh, section below. And um, yeah, please like and subscribe. Uh, you could definitely use some more of you uh, checking out the content. I would really appreciate it. The likes go a long way with YouTube algorithms and, and whatnot. So I don't know how all that shit works. Take care. I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.